I'll warn you that my field maps haven't been updated to, since 2006 when I retired. Then we'll be lost together. We're not going to be lost at all because they haven't moved any of the trees. Cool. So I'd like to thank you all for coming here. And I'm, as Tracy said, I'm a gardener first, I'm a citrus person second. And when I started here, I things like that variegated pink flush Eureka lemon. I saw that and I was like, holy moly, this is a moat. What a great lemon tree and all this. And I took the nurseryman out to it and I said, it's so cute, you really should be growing this. And they told me I was the first person that had ever come out and taken them to a tree and told them it was a cute tree. <laughs> and so they did start growing it and uh, Don Durling down there said, they, they just sell so many of them. And he said his father still goes to that, look, look, at, would look at that thing and say, I can't believe people buy that. It's, it's a very cool tree. And it doesn't get quite as big as a regular lemon tree, so it doesn't try to eat your house. And this is a full-on sweet. Now, as I said, I don't have a map to the, to the new planting. As long as it's not blood. But... There's a little tree that I noticed years and years ago, and we joked about it, but nobody had ever put it together before. But the lemons and the lemon trees and the citron trees that are sweet, you notice that the flowers have no pink on them. Oh, I took the one off. Oh, okay. I can do a sweet one. And so, <laughs> if there's a yeah, you're welcome oh, to oh, sample. Thank you. <laughs> It smells really good. Sure. This is a full-on sweet one. Now, if you were from the Middle East or something, this would you would really, really like this. Can I use this? Oh, who knows? I don't want to But, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you what. I, I, it's an acquired taste, and I've never acquired it. That's right. And so, they all sort of taste alike to me. There's all different varieties of things. lemons. To me, it's like, you should know what kind <laughs> I've never acquired a taste for it. Mm -hmm. It appears very nice. Uh huh. It's not purple at all. There, there's no acid. If there, if it were a lemon, as we go across, you would once notice that, or you just you said, yeah. Well, it was one of those things where they they were going to. Uh, we had a, the pink, the variegated pink flesh lemon tree. Uh, Throw sports. Anytime you have mutations, and that pink lemon is a mutation, uh, mutations are very unstable. Mother Nature just likes to switch things around. And so we had limbs that were on that tree that were producing, branches that were producing acid, uh, you know, non pink and sweet and stuff. And they were going to ma have to map the entire tree, twig by twig, to find out where the acid was and where the, where the uh, acid list was on. I forget what the cultivar was, to tell you the truth. But, um, and I said, well, why don't you just go by the new, new growth color and by the flower color? And they said, huh? Wow. And I said, well, you know, I noticed that, that you know, that's pink if there's acid. Or, uh, and, you know, all these people were just sort of looking at each other saying, huh? And they went out and checked, and I remember one of the geneticists sitting there at the table saying, I can't believe I didn't know that. Yeah. And I've never seen it published anywhere, so of course it's not <laughs> one of those things that is officially university stuff. So, but I'll tell you right now, if you see a lemon or something that does have white flat it has all white flowers, it's aspicus. Anyhow, let's wander across here. <laughs> because we want to pull some hopefully there's still some on here. Yeah. I'm looking at all the mummies here. Yeah, this is uh... this is Moro blood orange. Here we go. This tree will work. There are four of them. And my cutter can just pull some sound food off. Moro is the most common blood orange that you find in the grocery store. You see, it's got a nice red blush on it, and it's got incredibly oh, yeah. colorful fruit. Yeah. And hopefully, my cutter will help me share the flavor with you, because I want Coming. you to remember what the flavor looks like <laughs> when we get to Taraco. Oh. If I, 
Thank you, ma'am. So cool. I dropped Me too. Wonderful. It's good. I've got um, wet wipes yeah. here for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Now I know why. Thank you. <laughs> and my cutter certainly has free permission to use my, my towel. Is it good? Harder than I thought it was going to be. I know why you're wearing this towel. I'm taking your work. Oh, come on, be adventurous. Mother, Anybody? Any takers? I want some more. Oh, no, I'm wearing some more. Okay, that's really good to hear. Mm -hmm. You just kept picking on two pounds. One more. One more. <laughs> but we'll care. Yeah. I'm a regular blood donor, so don't worry. Yeah. She says. Yes, I used to have a Moro orange in my backyard, and the day taste I tasted Taraco, I went home and I said, the Moro has to go. Is it typically? Oh, so this is the one she likes better. Modeled like that. It makes a beautiful, normally it makes a beautiful oh. rosy color flesh. This is an unusually red one. We're late in the season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is this available on the oh, market? Yes. We can look at oh. Yeah. oh, yeah, sure. Uh, and when I would have the sun test people mm -hmm. out here, and I would yeah. rate them yeah. about yeah. why yeah. are you yeah. Yeah. marketing an inferior yeah. variety, uh -huh. uh, they said because Look at it. Hmm. Well, there's no hmm. red. There's no red cheek or anything. They said it's hard to sell an orange. This looks like an orange for a premium price. If the other one has a red cheek, and so it was easier. They thought it would be easier to sell. So that was the reason. And I have a taraco in my backyard now. And my taraco does not get as red as what you're seeing here. They grow, also grow on. Can you get the, the dwarf variety? Oh, oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. Not the well, if if you if the store if the nursery is growing it on flying dragon, but I would I've got mine on C35 rootstock and it's not that big. And mine is probably 25 years old and it's about it's smaller than the tree behind you there on C35. But my trees tend to grow rather vigorously at home. Isn't that a wonderful, yeah. wonderful Where did you buy uh, your, your uh, Taraco I from? didn't. I made it. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I, I buy oh, from that yeah, place. She, she said that you would I, I bud my own trees. Mm -hmm. I've can, you, can you talk mm -hmm. about the soil that they like? I mean, this is very it's sandy. Uh, actually, <laughs> this is a Hanford sandy loam. <laughs> <laughs> sandy loam. <laughs> sandy loam. <laughs> and <laughs> citrus just likes <laughs> good drainage. Wow. So if you're on clay, you need to <laughs> do, do something about it. Some <laughs> really great citrus trees are growing on clay soils. And there were fields that I would have to okay. sample from up in the Central Valley that I'd, after a rain or something, I'd start at one end of the field. And I was about four inches tall, by the, taller by the time I got to the other end of the field <laughs> you know, because of all the clay that stuck to the bottoms of my shoes. But really, citrus, will pr oh citrus roots are all in the top 36 or so inches of the soil profile. So as long okay. as you're providing good drainage, it'll tolerate pretty much any soil you've got. And wow. you just want to fertilize good. on a regular basis. If you have a very sandy soil, you need to fertilize and water more frequently than if you were on a clay soil. Now you're going to probably put the same amount of water on either one. It's just that with sandy soil, you water uh, the, it, the water goes through the profile very quickly. So you can put more water on quickly and for a shorter length of time, but you have to do it more frequently. So you know, like my house, at Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, during the summertime. And then Saturday and Sunday, we just let them struggle a little bit. If you were on a clay soil, maybe once a week, or once every two weeks. These run about once a week on the soil. Uh, and you see, we used to use furrows 
uh, for irrigation. And now we've gone over completely to the micro sprinklers, which are almost invisible under there, if you look about two feet out from the front. Mm -hmm. And those are pie-shaped uh, emitters. That, that it's like a um, 270 degrees. There's like a wedge where it doesn't spray. And so the, that's aimed, that wedge is aimed towards the trunk so that the trunks never get wet. Just the root around it. That also tends to keep down uh, Oh, wow. Okay. Because they're not watering any more than the area where the roots are. Mm -hmm. And you leave the leaves like Morocco. Right. <laughs> 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 <Just about. laughs> this one is Taraco. T-A-R-O-C-C-O. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much. Far superior to a Moro. Yeah, But it isn't pretty on the outside. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a with a lot of us, so you know. And that's, um, really, now that was <laughs> abnormally red. Cut I, I really think it's that was very tree. red. Let's go down to the very last tree. Okay, remember I said about uh, acidless fruit. Mm -hmm. Now here's another version. Now this is what, we would not call this a blood orange. This is a pigmented orange. The r distinction in my mind at least I, I, th this is how I have always referred to them. The blood oranges, the coloring you see inside, is pigmented by anthocyanin. That's the pig natural pigment that makes those blood oranges. This is pigmented by lycopene, oh. a different chemical. So this is technically not a blood orange, even well, though like you have pink. That's right, Thank this you. is like tomatoes. Lycopene is in tomatoes. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> what is this one again? What is this variety again? Pardon? What is this variety again? Oh, uh, I've done it. a blank on it. Oh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Very sweet. This is an acidless orange. Oh, it's high sugar. Acidless orange. Veniglia. No, I should have known no, that. No, the Veniglia. So is this the Veniglia? To be able to tell what is. I-N-I-G-L-I-A, something like that. And so here is your example of an acidless orange. You have an acidless lemon. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of difference in the flavor between mm -hmm. the acidless orange and the acidless lemon. This orange is much sweeter. This, uh, this particular variety is primarily used in uh, oh, thank you. as rootstocks and stuff and for indexing. Oh, <laughs> It's, it, although it is commercially available, I already anybody, tried some. anybody else <laughs> who wants to try it? <laughs> Any more? Any, anyone? <laughs> it's 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 pretty. Pretty. Okay, now the flavoring, um, the color flavored by the light. Mm -hmm. The color, right. Well, light sweet. Mm -hmm. Light That's real sweet. It's consistent and sweet. That, color, yeah. that pink lemon up there yeah. is yeah. lycopene. Blood oranges are by anthocyanin. The cara cara pink flesh navel orange is colored by lycopene also. So, what do you mean it's used just for indexing? <laughs> uh, when we when we're trying to get it, it, it if it's infected by a disease, it makes a strong visible reaction on the, the growth of the tree. And so that's how you determine whether something has a disease. We'll graft on you know put buds from a new variety that came in from out of the country. We'll put the buds onto a rootstock, and if there's a disease present in that imported variety, it will show on this tree. Oh. And so then we say, oh, okay, it's got exocortis or something. We have to put it through thermotherapy then. If something comes in and it's clean, it cuts down the time and the work by years. But if something tests positive, then we got a problem and we have to take care of that problem. Okay, so now we've seen just any other blood oranges that anybody is uh, curious about. Or we'll get to the Cara Cara. Okay, we got some coming up that row. Uh, I don't want trench irrigation for this. Was this primarily because of the high cost of water? That you need to find more ways to do it? Or was it actually better for the trees? Better, it's better for the trees and better for the field management because when you're, you know, you're doing irrig furrow irrigation, uh, nothing is getting wet in the center, and we're watering a lot of this from uh, lateral 
diffusion, mm -hmm. and so we've got a lot of weeds. This cuts down on weed control. What you see here is uh, Seville Sour Orange, and this is what is typically traditionally used for orange marmalade. And if you look, don't look at that tree, that one's sick, but if you look at the others along here, sour oranges are pretty trees. They were frequently planted just as an ornamental. So if, if you dare, this is a sour orange. If so, you dare. I'm, I'm just warning you. You dare? It doesn't taste good. Sour. <laughs> Very sour. Uh, in other words, we don't have This is sour anymore. orange. This is the one that orange marmalade is always used for. So they use the rind. They use the rind and they use the juice from it too. You but but you throw a couple pounds of sugar in there. It doesn't taste. But it has a distinctive flavor. Like <laughs> That's the photograph you need for the picture of her when she tasted even more than five women. Oh, no, no, it's not. In fa and of course, we have things that we call bittersweet also, that are just halfway between. I'll take you to one of those. Anybody else here? Yes, we're done. Okay. <laughs> Even I wouldn't taste. Really? Yeah, it's down at the end of one of these Whoa. rows. Whoa, what's... The uh, I noticed on all your trees, you don't have any, any litter underneath or any mulch. Oh, interesting. No, we could never manage it mulch that would be uh, very high energy uh, high uh, maintenance we have to be able to uh, several times a year we come in and we break out all the fruit and stuff that's underneath there uh, but no they've never done mulching okay it's incredible and I have seen it and I've got pictures where the entire tree looked like this group here but this is Chinoto, and this is actually a semi-sour orange, bittersweet. And so those of you who were too chicken to try the last one <laughs> might want to try this one. This one actually uh, does really well in containers. So oh. you can plant them, you know, like, and you can, to you can uh, uh, topiary them into a little ball in containers, a very formal look. Uh, and what was it called? This is Chinotto, C-H-I-N-O-T-T-O, or if you're real Italian, I think it's Canotto. Canotto. But thank you. It's uh, you can use this for marmalade too, and the this tree will look like this okay. about nine to ten months out of the year. The fruit just hangs and hangs and hangs. They're coming out of my pocket. It, they're just amazing. Hmm. Anybody else that want to try this? I'll have another. <laughs> <laughs> That's my thoughts exactly. <laughs> but you can see how pretty the trees are. And, the, and this is a, a uh, tree that was planted in the 1980s. This is about as big as it's ever going to get. Anybody else? There it is. All yours. <laughs> Have you ever made margaritas with this? No, I'm not. I'm not a, I don't I mean, drink this at all. Make, wouldn't this make but good it margaritas? Would, yeah. it, it would make great marmalade. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, but it's just a gorgeous ornamental. It is. We, we don't do any pruning of them as far as attractiveness. But just imagine if that were trimmed into a nice little ball shape uh, or something. How beautiful that would be. And you can imagine what it's like when it's flowering, too. Wow. Yeah, it looks like... And the abundance of the fruit is at the outer edge, yes, so it's so that would, so for you, your guys, purposes, pruning would be very, very small environment to be able to do that. Well, lose the fruit. I'm just saying that if well, as long as you would lose the fruit, yes. Yeah. But you could train it in this off season and nip it back to make the shape on it. Exactly. The tags are for for that. And plant time, if it's been open pollinated. You get loads of seeds. And I only found a few on this one. So pollen was if there's if they're self-pollinated, you get only a few uh, you get very I few fruits. Oh, and so what the farmers do is they grow them in isolation. Cuties, not sweeties. Uh, they grow them in isolation and they spray them 
with gibberellic acid to trick them into thinking that they have been pollen cross pollinated mm -hmm. so that they produce seedless fruits and they produce the crops that way. Oh. That's good. But in the home environment where you have other pollen sources nearby, uh, you will get seeds and the fruits. Now across the here is one of my all time favorites that you can open. She knows she's and like friends. It's been released, it's never been named anything. I don't. Why just, this one was developed. This variety was not developed on our campus. It was developed by the USDA in Florida, and it was not a good variety for Florida. But it just didn't grow well for them there. But it grows really well here. And they sent it to us for evaluation, and look what you've got here. It's absolutely gorgeous. What is this? This actually ripens around January. And it's one of my all-time favorites. It had the budwood has been officially released. Yeah. That is what is what it is called? What is this one called? USDA 882. <laughs> <laughs> How do you spell that? It's US, it was developed by the USDA, and it's 882. It tastes like Christmas. It, it <laughs> usually misses the Christmas season. Really? Whoops. But I'm sorry. It just depends upon the, the year. <laughs> There's no shortage of fruit Thank here. You. And if you want, you can just pull a piece off and eat it. In wow. wow. What's on your USD? USD? Juicy fruit gum. It came from these trees right here. And you can see by the number of flowers on the ground that it's a very floriferous tree. It's a it would make a beautiful garden tree, except that it really gets big. And it smells wonderful. And you can see the fruit is the fruit on that those juicy fruits were very tart. They don't you might see green fruit on there, not likely. Uh, but the fruit never gets its aroma until the fruit actually turns yellow. This was the very, I think this was the very first tree I took the Givadon perfume people to when they, years and years ago when they first started coming to the collection. And it was like, oh my gosh. And then of course they got overwhelmed by how much we had here and said, oh my gosh, we gotta send our noses out. But this is Oxanthra neocaledonica. And it's also known as, from me as the juicy fruit tree. So how does that work? Like, what's the interface between a citrus research collection and a company that wants to exploit a fragrance? For I mean, how, how does that? Where how does that work? work? Do, you, do they is, get they? It's freely uh, offered. Where? So they just come and they do their research and then they go <laughs> they and they, and they plant smell. It themselves and mm -hmm. start having Actually, them. they they have found that this is such. In fact, on 60, 60 minutes ran a little thing about the company. Of, maybe a month or so ago and part of it was filmed right here in the variety collection but as a result of them realizing how valuable this collection is to their them and to their research they have started uh donating money for oh. the upkeep of the collection oh, so that was kind of nice that they that they chose to do that i'm just looking to see if there's anything just stunningly good the tdes are nearby here uh, 22. All right, we can go down to Tahoe Gold. That's it. <coughs> <coughs> Back years ago when I, uh, they made some crosses that were temple crossed with dancing and the, and the result of that was crossed with encore. And they, and I got sick and tired of cr writing that all out. So I started calling them TDE one, two, three, or four. And this is one of those. And if you've seen one, you've almost seen them all. They tend, they're triploid, so they tend to be seedless, although even triploids will even make a seed once in a while. Like you. No, well, then, no, the Washington. Hey. All right, this, that's a very good question. Uh, you there are two ways that you get seedless fruit. Mm. Well, three if you want to call tricky things, but two, two, two naturally. If it's triploid, nature is always wants an even number. So if you're diploid, you'll make seeds most often, most of the time. If you're triploid, 
you will be seedless, sterile, like a, it's a mule, okay? Think of, think of a triploid as being a mule. Now, there are other things going on. Naval oranges are simply, they have sterile pollen. And so they are diploid. It looks like it's an easy one. They're diploid, but they're, <laughs> but they don't, so they don't make seeds though. Uh, they're, I hesitate to use the term, but it's commonly used. Uh, there are some things like... <coughs> let's keep eating here. <laughs> which is also different. It's soundless. The pollen is not sterile, but it has a lethal gene for seeds. So the seeds try to develop, and they, a million times, one in a million might make a seed. So you can have diploids, they're seedless. What is that called? What is this called? It's a crow. This is one of the 10th fancy Encore hybrids. It's Tahoe Gold. Actually, Shasta Gold is probably the highest quality one. And it's in the next row over. Can you buy it? Unless it's the next one. like the other one, it's just a little finer texture, that's all. So, no point in spoiling your stomach on <laughs> She has the gold, it's the same as what we just ate. Except it has a finer texture. <laughs> this is Cara Cara, the pink flesh navel orange. I hope when I cut it open. It's a Washington navel orange that mutated to develop lycopene pigmentation. So it's a Washington naval orange, and it was it was in, discovered in Venezuela, just a single branch on a uh, Washington naval orange tree. It was brought to Florida, and Florida planted it out, and it didn't do very well for in Florida. They thought it was just a junk tree down there. But of course, it got sent to California, too and it does very well in California. So remember I said about Mother, mother Nature uh, mutations can tend to, be, uh, tend to be unstable. Well, this one will frequently put out little twigs that have variegated needs that may or may not, and twig may or may not grow into a pink flushed Tree. And the first tree that Tom went to up there that I was heading for, and he got he aced us out on that one to start with, uh, <laughs> was the pink flesh navel orange with variegated leaves. Anyone else? Thank you. So this is actually the kind of this is the navel orange I have in my own backyard. Because you know, in season you can always get a good regular navel orange, but these don't go for a premium price. And in my mind, if you're trying to decide what you have room for in your own garden, uh, you grow the ones that you like, obviously, that cost the most in a store. Mm -hmm. Because you can always get a good Valencia orange, you can always get a good navel orange, but it's not easy to get a good blood orange. What is that one called? This is called Cara Cara. C-A-R-A, C-A-R-A. My favorite one. It's a nice one. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice. But the longer you let them hang on the tree, the sweeter they get. And of course, farmers are anxious to get that payday, so they tend to pick their fruit before it's as sweet as you might want it. There are legal standards for how sweet a fruit has to be before they're allowed to pick it. But you would actually like it a couple percentage points higher in the sugar acid ratio. So. The best thing to do is to have the tree in your own garden, and then you just pick what you need as you need it, and they just keep getting sweeter. Okay. <laughs> wow, this is yummy. You can get what you want. Oh, yeah? Oh, I see. They are, though. 
quite a few years ago. Oh, the varieties Mellow Gold and or Blanco were developed here on the campus. This is Mellow Gold. It's one, you see Ora Blanco in the stores these days. That didn't taste quite right. Uh, I'm sure I counted right. One, two, three, four, five. That's correct. Okay. Okay. We can do this? We can do this. It's legal? Yep. Well, I just don't want to poison people. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good I'm thing. joking. It doesn't look like mellow gold. I really just don't feel good. It is good? Okay. All right. All right. This is mellow gold. <laughs> I have I have this in my backyard. It's grapefruit? Yes. Uh huh. Wow. Actually, it's half yeah, grapefruit, like half pomelo. This this is mellow gold. This is Nora Blanco's sister. Right. Do you think this one's sweeter? Or Nora Blanco's sweeter? Nora Blanco's. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. Now. We're going to go to the next one here. I'm going to try. Okay, so it says you were going to get that. You can have it. I was going to have it. I sent a box back to my partner's sister this morning. Okay. This is uh, commonly called cocktail grapefruit. And this is a very small one. Uh, there is no grapefruit in this piece of fruit, first of all. Huh? Okay. And so it was a misnomer. Uh, it was developed here at UCR. It was never officially released. It escaped into the common uh, marketplace. And so it's been called by several names, but most commonly cocktail grapefruit. And I just try to cut it down the cocktail uh -huh. and let it go at that. Uh, this tends to be very seedy, but this one isn't for some reason. And uh, the weather has been really strange this year. It's my favorite, in our household, it's our favorite one for juice. Because it is seedy, it's really difficult to eat it out of hand. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, it's very mild. It's actually got the same mother as Ora Blanco and Mellow Gold. Oh, really? Mm. But the dad, the pollen parent, was a Frua Mandarin. So it's actually half mandarin or tangerine and half pomelo, massiveless pomelo. Isn't that yummy? Yeah. What do you mean it escaped? Uh, somebody simply spirited some budwood out and released it. Oh. <laughs> it's called theft. <laughs> well, pretty much. That's the why seedy we... side of citrus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. If you've ever, you know, read the book, uh, what is it, the orange, the orchid? Yeah, same idea. Same idea. There are some real nutty people out there. We don't plant junk. <laughs> this is what we eat in our household instead of Valencia orange juice. This is Ortonique. It's a tangor. A cross between a mandarin and an orange. And it was a natural occurring hybrid that occurred in Jamaica. And it got the name Tang Ortonique because it's O-R for orange, T-A-N for tangerine, and I-Q-U-E for unique. And it ripens. Usually you can start eating the fruit around February. I haven't tasted this today, so you're, you're my guinea pigs. Uh, but it holds on the tree through the entire summer. So you don't run out of juice uh, fruit. We're not real big fans of Valencia oranges. They're okay, but my husband's not a fan of it. And so when there's so many things to choose from, we just go to something else. Is it sweet today? It's there? It's good. The good thing is that it hangs on a tree all summer. It hangs on the tree all summer. Uh-huh. It's good. It's good to oh, take the oh, 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 See why you like the flavor. Very good. It's a it's a really nice rich flavor. And like I said, in July, it's gonna be absolutely wonderful. It, you know, you just but you see it has seed fruit and flower throughout the year. And 
other frequently planted as dooryard trees. Uh, the, this one doesn't look any better. And I think what happened is we had some wind. The wind comes in that direction, from that direction, and they might just be wind burnt. I hope that's all it is, but that looks really bad. Uh, anytime you can see through a tree, you've got a tree in trouble. Uh, but this is the acid fruit of the Philippines, and keyword acid. Mm -hmm. So uh, you don't want to perhaps sample this one. <laughs> But uh, typically, uh, my husband had a colleague who was from the Philippines, and he said that he just throws a whole bunch of them in the blender, whirs them, uh, adds water to it and sugar, and it makes a lemonade type beverage with it. It's also used to, you know, the rind, shreds of the rind are used uh, to season uh, fish and rice and stuff like that. And they've overtaken us there, so either they're skipping some good stuff, or I'm talking too much. So let's see, where do we want to go? I know, let's beat them to the. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> you would. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Good root stock for the variety, bad root stock for the variety. Oh, are you kidding? They're the same age tree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this makes a little sized green fruit that has absolutely no value whatsoever. It's uh, from, a native from, Austra it's from Australia, it's very drought tolerant and all that. Never been officially released, but if you see any little fruits on the ground that are all dried and desiccated, you can probably get some seeds out of them and grow your very own, and maybe it won't be hybrid. This one is a hybrid of it right here, with uh. this hybrid with lemon. But uh, to the best of my knowledge, this is not commercially available. <laughs> but it is nice when it's flowery. Kishu that they're standing at right now. Seedless, Seedless Kishu. It's also sold as uh, Kishu Mini. This was one that I had to beg and plead with uh, Don Durling to produce. And he got Armstrong Nurseries to agree to buy a bunch of them if he grew them. And they grew them on uh, Flying Dragon rootstock and it took him an extra year to grow them. So they weren't real happy about it because it was a, a cloudy winter, you know, it was a, a bad weather season. They didn't grow well. So it took an extra year to produce them, but they're really, really good. They tend to ripen around November and they're still on the tree. It's, if you think of it as a baby satsuma, it's always, it's always seedless and they're doing their best. You, you know, it's always a dead giveaway that something tastes good. If you look at the tree and yeah. it's all green at the bottom and all the fruits, all the fruits are on the top. top. <laughs> so we're not going to other than we're going to go over there and fix some of it. You all have to pick your own and you taste, feel it and taste it. Oh, okay. <laughs> it tastes really good, but it's no good for commercial because it's not good, right? It's difficult to pick. But, and we had like tried it and it was like, oh my gosh, this tastes so good. <laughs> and I said, yeah, it's really a shame because, you know, it's just too much work, too labor intensive to make them. And he called me during the week and said, can I bring my wife back? I want her to see these. And they planted them. And three years later, I got a, an email from him saying, we just sold our first crop of them at a farmer's market. And he said, people were fighting over them. And he said, they just sold it all out in one day. He said, people were just fighting over it. The next year, he sold his entire crop to Shea Panisse up in the Beta area. And for many years afterwards, and now it just appears on their dessert menu by name, by as he was key shoes. Uh, but he did write me, he said, yeah, and they were a, a bad word uh, to pick. But I was at $4 a pound, he wasn't. So what is it? <laughs> yeah. so what? Yeah. How do you spell that name? A-I-S-H-U. Yeah. And this is a kind of mandarin? That's a mandarin. And can we oh, buy that delicious. tree? Yes. Armstrong Nurseries regularly carries it. And I have seen those other nurseries do too now. Mm -hmm. But isn't that a, isn't that a beauty? That's and this is called? Seedless Kishu. K-I-S-H-U. And sometimes it's referred to as Kishu Mini. Kishu Mini. 
Wow. And do these keep on the tree? You betcha. I mean, we've been eating on these since November. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. They might look ugly on the outside sometimes. If we get a lot of rain, you know, you'll start seeing, you know, how rain breaks down on the same way. But there's no rain on the inside. Okay, that's good. So this is, this is in my backyard. We'll let everybody catch up. Okay, we're <laughs> These are Fortunella hinseyes. These are the smallest of the kumquats. And the Fortunella hinseyei, this is one of those things that are just unusual. Normally the diploids are the natural uh, occurring species, but in Fortunella hinsei, it's the tetraploid that is the natural order. We do have a diploid version right there, but this is the way they're supposed to look. And if you just cut, you know, squeeze the fruit, they're sometimes grown for uh, bonsai, there are a couple seeds inside, and there's no law that says you can't break that open and pull that seed out and stick that in your pocket. Yeah. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> there's just no law. They just happen to be there. They're there. If you want to grow a unique little house plant or topiary or uh, bonsai, this is it. It does have thorns. It does have thorns. But it's available commercially, so I shouldn't even be showing it to you. But this is Fortunella obovata, and it is also a kumquat, and just a real pretty, pretty thing. One of the uh, growers and I had this big argument about kumquats one time having this was the prettiest kumquat, and he was going on and on about how this other one was really much prettier, was the prettiest one. And we went back and forth, and so it was up in his growing fields one day, and he said, come and see it. And I looked at him, and when he showed it to me, it was the same tree. He was just using one name for it, and I was using it. <laughs> One of the names of the stage is Cook the Fly. Uh, and you can see that thing died really fast. No, it's spread though, right? It's transmitted by So aren't you afraid to keep it? Uh, on for my entire life. This is probably it. This is Gold Nugget. And it's a Mandarin. Mm -hmm. And it's just coming in season right now, so I don't know how good they're going to be. They're really small this year, but I guess it made up for always seedless. Deployed. I'm going to taste the first one so I, I can tell you if it's up to par yet or not. Dang, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's good. It's on, it's on the right edge of It has the best flavor. If I only had one to live on all my life. It wouldn't have been that other one? The one? This really? is it. One of the tissue? Yeah, I, well, first of all, I have both. But, yeah, this is the one because this quiches have a limited season. This one you can start eating it mm. in mid March, obviously. And I have picked fruit off of this in October that was still sound and good. Well, you shouldn't let them hang until October. October. All right, no apologies. Oh, it's still pretty good. Did you get it? Oh, first piece. Mm -hmm. So I just the oh, is that good? <laughs> so this would be your number one, huh? This is my number one citrus. Alone, does Desert Island Island, this would be it. This is it. Right. I'll take my husband too because he's really tall nice. and he can reach the high branches. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Utilitary. Uh -huh. I think I like the old He would come out and he'd pick <laughs> stuff up high for me. <laughs> Takers? Thank you. I tell this is good. Did you taste it? Not yet. And this is his favorite also. Want one? And he's a real He is one of the he's a sugar plum. Everything has to be ultra sweet. Whoa. Uh -oh. There I when we were doing uh, open house, That's tough. Uh, well, citrus, the orange blossom festival, I remember a little boy coming up to the table and sampling that. And he said, oh, mommy, taste that. It's just like candy. And and I just laughed because that is the reaction of people. Uh, you know, think about it. If orange blossom has been a month later or even longer. Thank you. So that is gold nugget. It's really good. Oh, this is
gold we have marks. Fifteen minutes through November. Nuggets. Thank you. Uh huh. I wouldn't recommend letting it hold that long. Right. 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 And it's right. probably the easiest of the red grapefruits to grow in California. And it's the most adaptable to. Other, if you're interested in red grapefruit, red type grapefruits, this is Rio Red grapefruit. It's not as red as the others, but it's a very easy to grow pink flesh grapefruit. Not as colorful, but very easy to grow compared to the others. We'll just toss it because you know what a grapefruit tastes like. Is there a dancy around? Uh, down that way. You want to taste dancy? I, I, I think my grandparents have a dancy at their house, but oh. I'm not sure if it's a dancy. So well, maybe if I... if we can detour past it, we will. Alright. Um, Remember I said there taste another fruit from it. Wow. This is, this is citrus hamiensis. And not too a few years after I started working here, which was a long time ago, Whoa. Uh, it flowered for the very first time ever. And we were so excited, couldn't wait to see what the fruit tasted like and all that. And the first fruit was way up there in the top, and we got somebody out with a ladder and got that fruit. It was the most awful tasting thing that you ever I spent the whole day sucking on lemon using trying to get that taste out of my mouth. Citrus hungry and the shape of the leaf is so huge. This is Awari Satsuma. It's our gold standard for Satsuma mandarins. And you, you can see it's sort of like really easy to peel. These tend to ripen about Christmas time. Please help yourself. Peel your own. Because I'm not your mother. <laughs> <laughs> and the name again, please. This is Awari Satsuma. O-W-A-R-I. No, they're not noted for hanging on a tree a long time. But we haven't had a lot of rain this year, so they're hanging better than they usually do. Uh, but they store well in refrigeration. So, if you're threatened with a rainy season, when they hit peak, you pick them, you wash them in your kitchen sink, and put a little bit of bleach in the rinse water to surface sterilize them. Put them out on the counter, get them nice and dry, and then into your crisper. And they will keep for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks that way. Hello. So, so. This is Owari. O W A R I. Satsuma. probably would have thought that was really good before the season. I know. Before the season. <laughs> I know. Uh, this is, could be in the top three. Fine right now. <laughs> Memorable part. And then... Is it a good one? That's just plain old Washington naval orange, the thing that built Riverside. And then here is that Cara Cara pink fleshed naval orange that I told you about earlier. And this morning when I was out here checking things out ahead of time, I cut one in half, and that's the reddest I've ever seen one. But you see, we have variegated leaves, this is very young tree. Variegated leaves. The fruit is typically striped when it's immature, and the fruit, of course, is really, really thick inside. And there are too many of us to sample it because there's just not enough fruit on the trees. So we try to. This is a navel orange. This is. You remember, it started out, there was Washington navel oranges planted in Venezuela. One of them mutated to make the pink flesh. Cara Cara, and then Cara Cara mutated again to produce variegated leaves. Mm. So there's a third mutation. Does it taste essentially the same? Yes, it does. Actually, what are you going to do? Fire me? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a number? Is there a minimum number that it's supposed to be? What do you mean? 
on each read? No. Well, usually we said it doesn't, but well, I'm going to cut little pieces so you can taste this. <laughs> God, I feel like I'm doing something really good. <laughs> Listen, I didn't take... I didn't you. take you to the decopan. Mm. So. I checked it out this morning, and the one tree had died, and the other one didn't have much fruit on it. Mm. So you're not going to see the decopan. To, to, the, to the what? Decopan? Oh, is that a tree? Is that a variety? Is that a place? Besides, the ones that we have are supposed to be kept secret. That's an orange? No, it's a mandarin.